What's up guys? This is John Meadows and this is Table Talk. So for today's breakfast menu, we have two pieces of sourdough toast. I've already started working on my toast. I have a couple organic eggs. Look at that nice, pretty orange yolk. I have a concoction bowl, which is cream of rice, a little peanut butter, a little sugar-free chocolate syrup, and I have my cup of coffee. So has your diet changed a good bit since when you first started? So when I first started, my goal was to get down as much food as I could for breakfast. That was usually a full cup of oatmeal, six whole eggs. It was a lot of food, it was a lot of calories. Um, you know, as the years went on, my breakfast shrank in size. I, um, I found that having a really full belly in the morning, I just didn't feel good. So, uh, and many times I would just get so sleepy, I would just want to fall back to sleep which I couldn't do because I worked in the corporate world. If you guys know my background, so I had to go to work. So as the years have went by, my breakfast has actually gotten smaller. I just feel a little better. And um, even when I was uh, competing frequently, i still kept a pretty small breakfast. I tended, I would tend to shuttle more of the calories around training. So my meals around training tended to be a little more robust to give me a little bit more energy and a little bit more recovery and the meals away from training tended to be not quite as big. So for me, I wanted the fuel around when I was going to train. Um, now, when I was younger, um, I did have a pretty, pretty fast metabolism, so I could get away with quite a bit of food. So I tried to, I like to have meals that are uh, what feel good for me and like for breakfast, this is perfect for me. Talking yesterday, like you know, you li you worked in in corporate America, you, you know, for years. You think you don't think you need to be a bodybuilder full time to make it work? So I spent many years working in the corporate world, and competing at the national level in bodybuilding. And many of um, the guys that were competing said you you couldn't have a real job uh, and be a successful bodybuilder. And I always just thought that that was kind of crazy because. It actually helped me stay on schedule, uh, structure. I would get up, I'd eat breakfast. I knew at 10 o'clock at work, I could make my protein drink. I would eat my lunch. Then at three o'clock at work, I was gonna have my protein drink. Then I would get home, I'd have a pre-workout meal, I'd go train, I'd get home and I'd have a post-workout meal. So I did that, I was in that routine um, for uh, well over a decade. And I liked it, it gave me structure. Um, you know, I just, I think most of the people that say that, honestly, they're just lazy. They just, they're just lazy. A lot of people like to talk about how, how hard of a worker they are because of what they do in the gym. I don't really think that that's that really, that, I don't think it's that hard. I think it's fun. When I go to the gym and I'm pushing really hard, which I've done for over 30 years now, I actually enjoy it. I get a lot of satisfaction out of that. I don't particularly consider that hard work. There are a lot of other things that qualify as hard work. You know, having to work 60 hours a week at a job uh, under stressful conditions. Um, you know, single mom's been working two jobs. I don't want to go off on the tangent here, but I just, what I think of as hard work and what some bodybuilders think of as hard work, it's just two different things. So um, to me, I would go to work. Uh, I would work through the week on Friday. I might take a half day. I'd go to the airport. I'd fly somewhere, I'd weigh in Friday night for the national show, I'd compete Saturday morning, Saturday night, I'd fly home on Sunday. Monday I would show up at work, they'd say how'd the show go, and I'd say oh whatever, I got fourth place, and they'd say okay back to work. That was it. That was it. So I was doing all these pro qualifiers, uh, doing pretty well in the bodybuilding world, but it was just almost like a hobby. But as long as you're getting your meals in, and as long as you're training hard, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter what you're doing the other X amount of hours through the day. So I have two twin boys that are now 10 years old. I've been married um, for a long time, since 2002. And you know, for me, um, I've seen a lot of relationships and families breakdown in this sport over the years. And it's kind of a sad thing to see. There's, um, there's a selfishness that comes with trying to be the best bodybuilder for many people that um, consumes them. 
be completely consumed in every aspect of their life. They think about nothing but bodybuilding. And, um, and I've been there. I've been there um, in my 20s especially. Everything I did was, is this gonna help me become a better bodybuilder? And I don't think it was necessarily a bad thing. I think it was just being passionate. But when you have a family and um, you know, your mindset has to adapt. You have to, you have to understand that you're no longer the center of the universe. If you have kids, your kids are the center of the universe, or at least they should be for you. So for me, I really wanted to make sure that I didn't become one of these people that were so self-consumed, I forgot about the people around me. And I know a lot of you out there have families and you work a lot and it's tough. And it's, it is a balancing act. There is no magic way to do it. You just have to prioritize and say, I'm gonna do this, this, and this my family and you just gotta make it happen. Um, you just gotta be well planned, you gotta be organized and you gotta stick to it and be disciplined, just like in bodybuilding. Kind of go into some of the struggles and of prep and, and getting to that conditioning because that's <clears throat> what you're known for, right? Well, a lot of people ask me about conditioning and what it takes. I've been kind of known through the years for being one of the competitors that's in better condition, uh, low body fat, and um, still maintaining a lot of muscle. And the truth is, it's not very pretty. It, you, you really have to suffer. And you could be eating 4,000 calories or 1,500 calories, but when you get down to sub 4% body fat, it's just painful. Um, you'll have you know periods where you have a little bit of energy, and then it'll fade and the smallest of tasks will seem monumental. If you're sitting on the couch and you're watching TV and you have to use the bathroom, the thought of getting up and walking 20 steps to the bathroom seems like a cardio session. Um, sometimes you get so tired, the thought of even talking, you know, just even having a conversation seems exhausting. And you really don't understand it until you've lived it. But I bet you there are many competitors that are watching this video that, that are nodding their head right now going, yep, I know exactly what he means. It's, um, it's a brutal place that you have to take yourself. And I hear people say you should feel great through a prep, uh, through the whole prep. And I do agree with that to a point. You should feel great. Your training should feel awesome. You should feel your training. But there is a point near the end, if you're looking for that next level of conditioning, where it's going to get painful. And at that point, man, it's just... It's almost like a battle of wills. It's like, can you, can you just take it? Can you take the mental anguish? Can you take the, I mean, all you think about is, I need to go to sleep, I'm so tired, and when's my next meal? Like, that's all you think about. It's kind of like Maslow's hierarchy, right? You remember at the bottom of that pyramid, it was food, shelter, clothing, things like that, where you go back to the bottom of Maslow's hierarchy and the only thing you think about is food. Like, that's all you think about. And uh, it, turns you, it turns you into a really primitive person. But um, it's tough, it's very tough, and not many people can really take themselves to that level. And, you know, it's a little different now. We have, you know, all kinds of if it fits your macros, diets, and, and um, flexible dieting, which is something that I practice. Um, but people take that stuff as a way to make diets. They think it makes a diet easy, but again, there's no, there's no way to make it easy to get to three point something percent body fat. Like, it's not easy. So, if you want to get to that conditioning, you just got to be prepared to suffer. All right, I appreciate you all watching. Thank you very much. I hope you en enjoyed the conversation. And last but not least, don't forget to subscribe below.